Welcome back to the day 13 of the 100 days of hell with Python algo trading. Today we will be covering the final two topics of object oriented programming in Python that is polymorphism and abstraction and after that we will start with an amazing project that is based on the sessions we have covered so far and you will see that how amazing it is to create a bot just with the help of basic Python and then you can imagine that how powerful it is and what we can achieve with the help of advanced Python and all those libraries right. So let's get started with today's topic that is polymorphism so so what is polymorphism you know that the meaning of poly is many and form is means you can say forms right forms right so in simple terms you can say that polymorphism allows a single method to behave differently based on the object it is calling right so this polymorphism have three principles so let's cover them one by one the first we have is method overriding which we have covered already i'll just explain you quick in a bit the second is method overloading and the last is operator overloading operator overloading right so now we have three principles method overriding method overloading and operator overloading so let's discuss the first principle that is method overriding let me scroll down and here we have so what is method overriding the official definition is when a subclass provides a specific implementation of a method that is already defined in a superclass means we have here two classes one is parent class another is child class because this child class is inheriting from the parent class right and here we have two methods with the same name the execute so when we create the object of this class ema strategy and we try to call the method strategy dot execute what will happen this will get executed because the child class method will override the parent class method so that is the method overriding and we have covered this already in the previous session you can also refer the multiple choice questions on uh, this topic and also tasks so that your concept building is way better right so now let's discuss second principle that is method overloading so what happens in method overloading let's create an example for this let's say we have a class class and let's give this the name maths okay inside the maths class we have two methods so the first method is define and let's give it the name area and it accepts the self of course and let's say the radius correct and it returns 3.14 multiplied by radius into radius so it will return the area of circle right we can say circle right and again we have another class with the same name define area and here the inputs are length and breadth and what it returns it returns return length multiplied by breadth right and it will be the area of rectangle correct so so now let's define the method overloading so what is happening here we have a single class and inside that we have two methods with the same name and both the methods behave differently based on the number of parameters or we can say based on input right so here if we provide the radius it will return the area of circle correct and again if we provide the length and breadth it will returns the area of rectangle but unfortunately this method overloading doesn't exist in python this is the concept of java it works perfectly in java but it will not work in python because python says that i have given you a more efficient and more smarter way to perform the same operation right so if we run this code in python it will not run it will throw an error and shortly we will see that so for now just understand this example so now what we can do to achieve the same functionality in python we have a very smarter way that is default arguments or we can say variable length arguments so what we will do first we will define a class so class maths right inside that we have a function define and area and inside that we have parameters like self then let's say argument one and argument two 
right? So what we'll do here, we'll just make the default value of argument two as zero, right? So now we will write a code here, a conditional statement that if a2 is equal to zero, means if there is only one argument is passed, what we will do, we will return 3.14 multiplied by a1 multiplied by a1, correct? So it will be the area of circle, correct? And what we can write else, if it is not zero, means some values there. So what we can do, we can return a1 multiplied by a2 and it will be the area of rectangle, correct? So that is the example of method overloading and shortly we will understand this with the help of an example. So don't worry about that. So the next is operator overloading. If you remember, we have already covered this topic earlier. In the magic methods, we added two class objects, right? The strategy one and strategy two. So what we can say here, the different behavior of any operator based on the situation. Let's say if we have two strings, so operator overloading, right? So the best example of operator overloading is the plus. So what we will do here, let's say we have two strings, right? Uh, string one, and string two, right? If we add this plus operator here, what it will do, it will concatenate this string, correct? So it will perform the concatenation operation, correct? Because these are the strings. Let's say if we have two integers, right? One plus two, then it will perform the sum of that addition. So here we can say addition, it will perform. But if we have two lists, let's say one, two, three, and plus four, five, six. What it will do, it will merge the list. So in simple terms, you can say that this positive or the plus operator behaving differently based on the input. So like when we have a string, it will concatenate that. And when we have integer, it will add that, right? And when we have a list, it will merge the list. So, so that is the basic idea of operator overloading and We'll see some examples of this also, don't worry. So let's see some examples of method overloading in Python. Let's say we have a class as trading strategy and inside that we have a method as execute, right? And here we have a default argument of times that is one. So what will happen here while creating the object, when we call this method, if we do not pass any argument, it will print executing strategy. But if we pass any argument, it will print the same thing three times, right? So it will print the executing strategy three times and it depends on the arguments. If I pass the argument as five, it will print the executing strategy five times. So that is the example of method overloading. And let's see another example. So what is happening here? Here we have a class as trading strategy. And inside that we have method with the name execute. And the default arguments are times equals to one and strategy name is default. So if we do not provide any argument while calling this, what will happen? It will take the default argument of times as one and strategy name is default. So when we call this method without any argument, what will happen? It will output executing default trading strategy run one, correct? If we call this with the argument as three, it will print the same thing three times, correct? But with the default name. But if we provide both the things, the times, means two times it will execute and the name of strategy, which is EMA. So it will print out the string executing EMA trading strategy, run one and then run two. So, so these were the few examples of method overloading. You can refer more examples in the MCQ and task. So now let's move to the next, which is operator overloading. And for that, so you can see here, we have a trading strategy and inside that we have a constructor function and magic method with add and a magic method with str. So here I am creating two objects, one with the 500 value and second with the 300. So when I try to add the strategies, it will output as the 800. And this is nothing but the operator overloading, which we have covered already. So I don't think you have any issue here. And if you still have, let me know in the comments, we'll discuss it further. Okay. Now let's move to the last topic of the day, which is abstraction. So what is abstraction? Abstraction is a concept in object oriented programming where you define abstract classes and methods. Pay attention to these words where you define abstract classes and methods that are meant to be overridden in derived class. 
This allows you to define a template for other classes to implement. So what is happening here? Let's see this example. So whenever you see this ABC, it means this is an abstract class. This is the first condition that it should be inherited from the ABC. Right. The second is it should be having at least at least a single abstract method. So whenever you define an abstract method, you write this abstract decorator. You can say this is the abstract class, the whole and inside that we have two abstract methods. And one more thing, you cannot create object of this abstract class. So basically we have three things to remember here. The first thing is it should be inherited from the ABC class. So here it is uh, we have done. The second is it should be having at least a one abstract method. So we can write a one. And then the third is we cannot create object. Now you see here that this was the abstract class and here we have another class. The inheritance is happening here because here we have written the name of the parent class here, right? And then what we can do here, we have to write this abstract. We have to override that and that becomes an abstract class. Let's quickly go to the computer screen and perform some examples of polymorphism and abstraction. Method overriding. When a subclass provides a specific implementation of a method that is already defined in its superclass. So, okay, so here what is happening? We have two classes. One is the parent class that is trading strategy. Another is the EMS strategy that is the child class and which is inheriting from the parent class that is trading strategy, right? And in both the classes, we have the same method with the name execute. And now we create the object. And when we try to call the execute method, this child class method will will override the method of the parent class. So let's hit shift enter and you'll see that executing EMS strategy. That is the method overriding. Uh, very simple. Again, we have the example of method overloading. So here what is happening? We have a class with the name trading strategy and inside that we have a method and in that we have default parameters of times equals to one and strategy name is equals to default. So after creating the object, if we do not provide any parameter, what will happen? It will take these as default and it will print, let's say shift enter. And now when we call the strategy, if we don't provide any argument, what will happen? It will print executing default trading strategy run one, right? By default. But let's say, if I provide here times equals to two, so it will print that string two times. And let's say default strategy, we write as awesome strategy, which we have seen already. Awesome strategy. And when I had shift enter, it will print the string two times. So that is the method overloading. And let's see another example. So here also it is almost same. Here we have default parameter with the value one and now we have the second example. So inside that it's almost same again. So the times equals to one, the default argument. So let's try to create the object and uh, call this execute function. So I'll just comment this out. And first we call without any argument. So when I hit shift enter, it will print only one time because we have default argument as one. And when we pass an argument with three, so what will happen? It will get printed out three times. So when I hit shift enter, you can see that we have this output three times correct okay now we have another example of operator overloading as we have previously seen that we can use these magic methods add and str and rdpr uh, subtraction and with the help of these magic methods we can perform the various operations on the objects of the class so here we are performing a addition on this and we have seen that this operator can behave differently depending on the situation so here we have two objects so it will just print it out here but when we have string it will concatenate and when we have integer it will just add them so we can say that operator behaves differently based on the input right so when i hit shift enter it will just add these and it will print out 800 right you can see here now we have the example of abstract class and as we have seen that we have few conditions for the abstract class. What is that? First, that this abstract class should inherit from the ABC class, right? Again, 
this abstract class should have at least one abstract method so we can decorate the abstract method with the help of this abstract method decorator so here what is happening we have a method which prints out connected to the trading server then for now we are just passing these static methods but here you can implement your security code right the code which you don't want to display to other people or let's say you want to make it hidden or let's say you want to make it simpler more readable right so that code can be written here and and then in the next class ema trading app and you can see that the inheritance is happening here this trading app class is being inherited to this ema trading app right and here also we have three methods the one which prints out logged into mobile trading app and the other which is strategy and execute trade so these methods will override the abstract method because we have seen that the abstract method is meant to be overridden with the derived class methods so these methods will override the abstract method and when you hit shift enter and try to access these methods and that is connect from the parent class the abstract class and also the mobile login which is from the child class strategy and execute trade one more thing that you cannot create object of this abstract class so these are the few conditions for the abstract class and when you hit shift enter it will get printed out right if i try to create object of this class what will happen let, let me try to do that i'll just comment these out and let's try that so app is equals to the name of this class which is trading app correct and so let's hit shift enter and it says can't instantiate abstract class trading app with abstract method execute trade and strategy so it will not work so this was it for the polymorphism and abstraction we will provide few mcqs and task uh, which contains the questions from this topic and you let us know if you have any issue and if you really like this video and if you think that it, it is helping you in any way then please don't forget to appreciate our efforts and that's it we'll see you in the next video until then bye bye take care have a nice day